Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Harmon. Today's video takes place in my home state of Washington and I'm at the location of the Marysville Pilchuck High School. And this is where on October 24th, 2014, there was a shooting that occurred here inside the school that left four people dead and three people injured. The perpetrator of the shooting was actually a 15 year old named Jalen Freiburg. Now, this whole case has a lot to it, so we're gonna do our best, give you guys as much info as possible. And of course, I'm gonna show you guys uh, the graves of all the victims. Now, the actual shooting itself took place inside the cafeteria. However, they actually stopped using the cafeteria the day of the shooting and they actually rebuilt the cafeteria in a whole new section. Um, before I get into the actual events of the story, I wanted to, of course, mention the victims, the four victims who passed away from the shooting. Um, because, again, they are the ones who need to be remembered. So the four victims were 14-year-old Gia Soriano, 14-year-old Shaylee Chuck Olnaskit, 14-year-old Zoe Galasso, and 15-year-old Andrew Freiberg. And now Andrew was actually the cousin of the shooter, Jalen. All four of the victims, including the three other people who were injured, all of them were best friends and all hung out almost on a weekly occurrence. And so that combined with the fact that, you know, one of the other victims, Andrew, was the cousin of the shooter, it just makes it more, more saddening and tragic because they all knew each other. Prior to the shooting, Jalen Freiberg, who of course was the shooter, he, he actually invited his friends, um, which included the four victims who died, and then the three other people who were injured. So he invited seven people total uh, to lunch uh, to sit with him inside the cafeteria. He actually texted all of them and basically said, hey, um, you know, let's all go have lunch together. Um, you know, come meet me in the cafeteria. And so basically all, all seven of them came and uh, sat at one table inside the cafeteria. And uh, of course we're, you know, waiting to, to hang out and eat lunch and of course see Jalen. Not all seven of the kids who were meeting Jalen that day um, had the same lunch. Uh, many of them had different lunches because they had different um, lunch times. So Jalen actually asked several of them if they could skip their classes in order to make it to the same lunch time. Mere minutes before the shooting took place, Jalen texted the family members of the victims, the people he was wanting to kill. And he also texted his own family members, um, kind of giving like his goodbye and also relaying what he was about to do. So Jalen came into the cafeteria and actually sat down at a different table than the table that all seven of his friends were sitting at. Um, they're all there waiting for him, but he decided to sit down at a different table, probably, you know, kind of planning out his thoughts on what he was about to do. That's just my guess. It doesn't say how long he sat at that table for. Either way, um, he sat at that other table for a little while, then he got up and at 10.39 in the morning, that is when he strolled over to, of course, the table of his seven friends and, of course, his cousin and uh, that is when he got into a verbal altercation with them. Now, again, it doesn't say what he said to them, but it just says he got into a verbal altercation with them. He pulled out his gun and ended up shooting eight shots at his seven friends and family that were there at the table at 10.39 in the morning. Witnesses there in the cafeteria stated that they saw Jalen's expression on his face and that they said that he basically had zero emotion on his face, kind of like a blank stare. He was actually staring at each of the people he shot, um, almost like staring them down while he shot them. And so the witnesses there in the cafeteria described it as a very, very cold and calculated uh, shooting. After he stopped shooting, three minutes later, four people were dead, three people were injured, and that is when Jalen took his own gun and committed suicide there in the cafeteria. One teacher did of course see and hear what was going on, saw the shooting and did try to go over and stop Jalen from shooting. 
But unfortunately, by the time she got over there to that area of the, of the cafeteria, he already had pulled the trigger, killing himself. The gun that Jalen used in the shooting was a 40 caliber Beretta P4 Storm. Uh, it was a semi-automatic handgun. And this handgun was actually his father's. Uh, his dad possessed many different guns. Ironically enough, his dad was a prohibited possessor, which means that his dad was not supposed to own any guns whatsoever. But for whatever reason, his dad was able to skirt around the legal system, probably purchase his guns legally, that's my guess. And so Jalen was able to get access to one of his father's guns, and that is how he was able to commit the shooting here. Jalen Freiberg, he was actually the homecoming prince, and he also was a football player. The homecoming dance was actually one week prior to the shooting. One week prior to the shooting, Jalen was actually suspended from school for fighting. Um, he got in a fight with a fellow football player uh, that was on his team, and he got in a fight with him because he claimed that uh, the other football player uh, was making some very derogatory comments and racial comments about Jalen and the fact that Jalen, uh, you know, was a part of the Tulalip uh, Indian tribe that is here in the area. And so Jalen said he, he punched his fellow football player. On top of all that, on homecoming night, Jalen and his girlfriend got into a huge argument and fights also, and they ended up breaking up. And so once that happened, um, Jalen's mood changed dramatically. And of course, his friends and family witnessed that he had a very dramatic change in his temperament. He says, quote, I set the date, now you will regret not talking to me. He also mentions in some texts and tweets that he doesn't want to go out alone and that he wants to basically take his crew with him. And so I'm kind of uh, surmising from that that he wanted to basically kill himself, maybe from the distraught of breaking up with his girlfriend, and he didn't want to go out alone or kill himself alone. He wanted to kill, you know, his friends and some family members that were close to him. That way he wouldn't go out alone. There also was some speculation that Jalen, he might have been upset at Andrew because Andrew was dating Zoe. Made it to the Evergreen Cemetery here in Everett, Washington. And this is the cemetery where Gia Soriano is laid to rest. Gia Soriano, uh, her family stated that she wanted to become a veterinarian. And uh, her goal was to um, work in the animal industry of some kind. And uh, basically she loved animals and uh, was really hoping to become a veterinarian. Just like a few of the other victims, Gia didn't actually die the day of the shooting. Um, she actually died two days later uh, in the hospital. Um, and so, you know, she, she gave a fight for a few days, but unfortunately succumbed to the injuries. And, uh, you know, again, it's just, it's just a senseless tragedy.
made it to the Mission Beach Cemetery, which is um, about eight miles west of, of course, the Marysville Pilchuck High School. And uh, this is where uh, two of the victims are buried, uh, Shaley Chuck Nolskett and Andrew Freiberg. Uh, most of the four victims, um, if not all of them, were a part of the Tulalip Native American tribe. The amount of detail and uh, just beautiful artwork that I've seen so far, not only on Shaley's grave, but on almost every single one of them uh, that I've seen, all the artwork is just unbelievable. It is so beautiful. Um, so Shaley was very very outgoing and very silly uh, as described by some of her friends and uh, Again was a very avid sports player And now what's interesting and kind of cool is the fact that there's a volleyball here That someone put on her headstone and uh, again, it's it's very fitting because of course Shaley loved volleyball uh, and she loved to play sports and so it's kind of cool someone left a volleyball right here um, on her headstone or grave. Uh, Andrew again was also a Tulalip tribe member. Uh, he was very outgoing, uh, very, very outspoken. Uh, he loved sports and uh, he also loved football. He also loved to wrestle and uh, ride his quad around. They were all friends, they loved each other, they all hung out with each other. And again, we're probably blindsided by, by Jalen's actions. No one was expecting him to, to pull out a gun and start shooting them um, because they all were friends. They all hang, hung out with each other. Um, also, Andrew's dad, Leroy, um, died about almost a year before the tragedy took place. Um, I couldn't find out the reason why his father died, but either way, I, I, his grave is right next to Andrew's.
I wanted to share this one with you for many reasons, but mainly because the victims need to be remembered. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Harmon, and until next time, I'll see you guys on the next one. See you soon.